Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Thursday, March 27th, 2014. Now tonight we see that there are some legal maneuverings going on on Capitol Hill regarding NSA reforms. Steve Watson reports that anti-NSA congressmen are being intentionally cut out of a debate on a surveillance bill. The legislation, which would see significant alterations to the 1978 Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, that's what we always refer to as FISA, will now be primarily overseen by the Chamber's Intelligence Committee instead of the Judiciary Committee. And someone speaking from the Judiciary Committee, a staffer said, many of our members are pretty outraged. They're trying to understand the committee's clear jurisdiction as the debate we're having is on civil liberties and constitutional rights. That's correct. See, the Intelligence Committee has really been the cheerleaders, as they point out in the article, for the NSA. These are people like Mike Rogers, who heads the committee. He is the person who is writing this bill that is supposedly a reform. Remember that the FISA bill of 1978 was actually a reform itself originally. It was supposed to rein in an out of control CIA in the wake of the church committee hearings that showed the abuses that were going on there. And so now they say they're going to reform this with a bill that's been written by Mike Rogers. The Intelligence Committee is not the committee that's looking at civil liberties and legalities constitutionally, whether it's being done correctly or not. They're the ones that are trying to aid the NSA and aid the CIA, giving them funding, giving them actually cheerleading. We have people who are supporting it. Look at the supporters, Peter King, Michelle Bachman, John Boehner, and of course, Mike Rogers. Representative Gerald Nadler on the Judiciary Committee issued a statement yesterday saying he was deeply concerned that today, for what appears to be the first time ever, a FISA reform bill has been sent to the House Intelligence Committee first. Now, another reason to cut this out of the Judiciary Committee is that they have a rival bill, the USA Freedom Act. That bill is being supported by people who really do believe in civil liberties and the rule of law. That's people like Rand Paul, Democrats Ron Wyden, and Mark Udall. Now, it's not just the false bill from the intelligence agency. We now see in California, a very revealing sting by the FBI. This is an anti-gun state representative who's been caught running guns in an FBI sting. Very reminiscent of Fast and Furious, or as I like to call it, False and Furious. California State Senator Leland Yee, a Democrat, was arrested Wednesday at his home in San Francisco. This year, pay attention to what he did here. He introduced two gun control bills, one of them, Senate Bill 108 would have required the Justice Department to study local safe storage ordinances to prevent children from getting access to their parents' weapons. Another one, Senate Bill 47, would have expanded California's ban on assault weapons to include semi-automatics, centerfire rifles, and pistols with the ability to accept detachable magazines. Now, those aren't going to go anywhere. But look at what this guy said when he was as part of the FBI sting, when they were talking to him. He said, do I think we can make some money here? He says, yeah, I think we can make some money. Do I think we can get the goods? Yeah, I think we can get the goods. People want to get whatever they want to get. Do I care? No, I don't care. People need certain things. Well, what kind of things was he going to provide to people? He was going to provide arms dealers with and undercover federal agents with weapons like M16s and rocket launchers. Yeah, you need a rocket launcher? I don't care. You know, people need things. What do they need them for? Well, they need them to start small wars in small countries, maybe wars in big countries. Now, we also see another dishonest reform being put forth in the Senate. This one is the shield law that's being put out by Chuck Schumer. And we had a pushback on that today from the number two Republican, Senator Cornyn from Texas. Now, this has a lot to do, I'm sure, with the fact that he's running for re-election in 2016. But at least he's on the right side on this. We'll take whatever we can get. The number two Republican in the Senate is lambasting a media shield law proposed by New York Democrat Senator Chuck Schumer. He said, this is a bad idea whose time has not come. Now listen to this. This is not only being called a shield law, but it's being called the Free Flow of Information Act. The Free Flow of Information Act. That lets you know that it is anything but the free flow of information. And listen to the way Cornyn described what it's really about. He said, they want to pick and choose which journalists are covered. He said, in other words, if you're a blogger, they might not cover you. But if you work for the New York Times, they might. Yeah, that's emphasis on the might. If you want to try to uh, exchange your journalistic freedom and your freedom of speech for protection by a few licensed journalists, that's what this bill is about. That's what Chuck Schumer is putting forth. 
And we need to look at what the mainstream media is providing for us. What are these official journalists that the government, people like Chuck Schumer, love so much? Well, you can see it at MSNBC. But the public isn't paying much attention. Look at what's happening over there. An article from Paul Joseph Watson points out that MSNBC is losing another quarter of its viewers, totally in free fall, just like CNN. Nielsen Media Research data shows that the biggest decline came at MSNBC, which lost nearly a quarter of its primetime audience. In total, the combined viewership of all three major cable news channels, Fox News, CNN, and MSNBC, they've dropped 11% to its smallest audience since 2007. Now they're really in free flow. Look at this, just in November of last year, CNN and MSNBC had lost nearly half of their audience over the previous 12 months, with the two networks losing 59%, that's CNN, and 52% MSNBC, especially in the crucial demographics that they're looking at here. Well, what's a beleaguered dinosaur media outlet like MSNBC going to do about this? Well, one of the things they can do is try to copy the true media. You know, we did have a report from Rachel Maddow recently questioning the fact that the FBI has exonerated itself in all 150 shootings. There are 150 to zero, as she pointed out, and also questioning what's going on with Ibrahim Todeshev. He was a friend of one of the alleged Boston bombers, and of course, he was picked up by the FBI, shot six times, once in the back of the head, execution style. So that was a pretty glaring example, and I guess she thought she would try the truth for a while and see if she could get some traction from it. But this is how they're really trying to push back against authentic media. Take a look at this hit piece from Chris Hayes at MSNBC. It is so rare when a politician just lets loose with absolutely justifiable profanity. Because you know who Rhode Island State Senator Joshua Miller was telling to F himself? He's this guy. Remember last year when press conferences about the horrible Boston Marathon bombing tragedy kept getting interrupted by a conspiracy theorist yelling about a false flag? There is something sort of clarifying when that guy, when Infowars and the RNC are the one-two punch defending the Second Amendment. There you go. Infowars is just a conspiracy website. No, actually, it's a news website, unlike MSNBC. And it also has a much higher rating, even if you just look at the website aspect of it. Look at the Alexa ratings. We have MSNBC at 544, but Infowars is much higher, 356. If you look at the global reach of websites, they're down at 2252, we're at 1296. But then of course, we have talk radio. And of course, if you look at talk radio, it's a much larger audience than cable news. If you compare their primetime audience to Alex's radio show, Alex's radio show is about 10 times the size. But let's look at their comments. He says it was a justifiable response when Dan Bedondi asked the state senator about the constitutionality and he said, F you, that's justifiable? That's kind of like when Pelosi was asked about the constitutionality of Obamacare and she said, are you serious? Yeah, we're actually serious. We're serious about whether or not these things are constitutional. But that means, are they legal or not? That's a real discussion that we need to have. And Dan Bedondi is not afraid to have that discussion. He puts a clip up of him doing a radio broadcast for his independent internet show in his basement. But you know, he may not have a fancy set like Chris Hayes, but he's not afraid to go after the truth. That's why MSNBC is losing their audience. You know, there's an F word that I'm not afraid to use. I'm gonna use it right now on the air. Okay, actually two F words. One of them is a five letter, the other is four letter. False flag. That's something that the mainstream media is afraid to talk about. Look at this report from Paul Joseph Watson. The media buries a bombshell admission of Turkish government planning a false flag attack. Listen to what Paul had to say about this. Well, in case you missed it, a huge story emerged today. Leaked audio tape between key Turkish military and political leaders discussing plans to stage a false flag attack. I'll make up a cause of war by ordering a missile attack on Turkey. This is a Turkish military leader speaking. We can also prepare an attack on Suleiman Khartoum if necessary. It's a direct cause of war. I mean, what we're doing, going to do is a direct cause of war. So this is a bombshell, classic, caught red-handed admission of false flag terrorism, pre-planning false flag terrorism to justify an attack on Syria. It's brazen, it's in your face. So how did the mainstream media 
respond to this massive story. Remember, this is the admission of a false flag attack in order to create a war with Syria. So how did the BBC describe it? They said it was a discussion of possible military operations in Syria. No mention of the false flag plan, no mention of the plan to attack themselves, blame Al-Qaeda, and then invade Syria. How did CNN describe the leaked audio tape in which Turkish military officials brazenly discussed false flag terrorism? They described it as Turkish, Turkish officials discussing military strategies for Syria. <laughs> That's right, it's pretty ridiculous. You need to see that entire clip. We don't have time to run it in the news. It's an almost eight minute clip. But there were some other clips in there. Let me just read you a couple of things that he highlighted there. The Washington Post headline was, Turkey moves to block YouTube, but attempt fails. And they say, the four are allegedly heard discussing a military intervention. See, that's what they call it instead of a false flag attack. Reuters says, Turkey says Syria security leak is villainous as YouTube is blocked. Says they even leaked a national security meeting, said the Turkish official, official at a campaign rally. He said this is villainous and dishonest. And the LA Times says the Turkish government blocks YouTube after recording is leaked. And again, they take the angle, eavesdropping on a top secret meeting and leaking recordings is a wretched attack and a grave offense on national security. Does that sound familiar? Isn't that the way the U.S. government reacts to WikiLeaks documents coming out, to Snowden documents coming out? Isn't that what they always do? They attack the person who is exposing the criminal activity and ignoring the criminal activity, not talking about that. That's the way you see Mike Rogers and others talking about these NSA leaks. They attack the person who is blowing the whistle on criminal activity and they ignore what's going on with it. But that's why mainstream media, whether it's newspapers or whether it's MSNBC and CNN, that's why everybody is losing their audiences because they're afraid to go where the truth is. They're afraid to talk about false flags. This is not something new. This is something that's been going on a long time. We see this with the Gladio attacks. That was based in Turkey. That was something that NATO was running. They were using false flag attacks there. They were setting up false terrorist events. And that was based out of NATO and Italy. They're trying to do anything they can. And Turkey is their last gasp result to try to get something going in Syria. And as we pointed out earlier this year, look at this article from March 5th. We said, order out of chaos, Gladio snipers began killings in Kiev. Same sort of thing. We see exactly the same types of tactics being used by NATO and by the US, these false flag attacks. We also had a report last summer, just as they were trying to start the war in Syria, at that time they were trying to use the narrative of the chemical attacks, and they were trying to blame that on Syria. But as we pointed out, rebels admitted responsibility for chemical weapons attack. That was an August 30, 2013 report from Paul Joseph Watson. And we also pointed out that in previous chemical attacks, the UN, Russia, and even US intelligence had identified those chemical attacks, those sarin gas attacks, as being homemade attacks. But they keep using the same tactics, the same strategies. Finally today, there's one last piece of news here. Very unusual circumstance, but it also ties into something that we're concerned about, and that's future false flag attacks. You know that Obama spoke of what his real concern was, a nuke going off in an American city like New York. And of course, then they pull back bomb detectors out of New York in response to that. Even though that's their biggest concern, they pull bomb detectors out of that. And we've exposed how there have been some missing nukes out of Dias Air Force Base. Nukes that were not even supposed to be in Dias Air Force Base. Now we see even more commanders being fired as part of the Nuclear Missile Command. The Air Force fired nine mid-level nuclear commanders Thursday and will discipline dozens of junior officers at a nuclear missile base in response to an exam cheating scandal that spanned a far longer period than originally reported. Air Force officials called the moves unprecedented in the history of the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Force. That's right, we've seen a lot, a lot of very unprecedented firings of senior personnel, especially around the nuclear missile force, but throughout the military, high-ranking officials being removed at an amazing rate. And so that bears watching. Now, right after the break, we're going to be back with some breaking news about another false flag.